All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Next Level by Association. Uh, those of you who are members, you guys know how this works. Um, every week I bring on a special guest to share their story with us. This started as a monthly dinner that I host privately in Orange County, California for the last 10 years. However, because of this whole thing, um, it's worked out well because we've been doing virtual for over a year now, and now we get to do virtual once a week. So it's working out really, really well for, for people to be able to participate. So um, we're really excited because uh, this week uh, is a good friend, somebody who I got to know about six years ago and um, heard his story and just blew me away when I met him. Blew me away uh, since I've watched and seen how he interacts with people, seen how he and his family um, have really just um, stepped up. Uh, it's It's been amazing to watch what they've done. It's been so incredible to watch what Zach has accomplished in the last um, in the last six years that I've known him, plus before that. But um, it, it's gonna you guys are gonna love this guy's heart and his story. And um, he's not a professional speaker. He is a, a a great human being that has a great story to tell. And so I've been saying we we just want to get his story out there more and more and more. And uh, and I would like to ultimately see you start getting paid to speak and do some. Some big things. I think there's some some great stuff. So that being said, Zach, welcome, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you asking me to be on here, and I am totally excited to share my story with everyone. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I know it's kind of last minute, and I know it's a holiday, and I know you're going down to Temecula as soon as this is over. So uh, we will try and keep it uh, uh, sensible and uh, time-wise and everything. But um, let me just tell you, Zach, I have always been impressed from uh, with you from the day we met. And, um, and you know, your story is so amazing. But just to see how you've adapted, and, you know, we were just talking before we got online or before we opened it up, and we were just talking, and, and you know, you were saying that you can't imagine not being able to see. Like, that's like that's a big thing. Uh, and yet, you you can't move couldn't move from your neck down and yeah. you know you think man either one of those would just petrify me and probably I, you know I'm not so sure that I would handle it as well as you as you have and um, and I've seen I've seen you uh, have to deal with struggles I mean I've seen you wanting to go to a, a Ducks game or wanting to go someplace and couldn't go mm -hmm. and a lot of that has changed now because you've got your your car and all that stuff but what when this first happened you know, you were 15 years old, right? Almost, almost 16. Yeah. And you were at the beach hanging out with some buddies, right? And correct me if I'm wrong. And yeah. then, and and then you, um, you wanted to go back in and swim one more time, or, and and what happened? Yeah. So, um, it was I was at the beach all day. It was in 2010. It happened to be Memorial Day, May 31st. That's Memorial Day. Just happened to fall on the 31st. And so I had the day off from school. It was Monday. I was super stoked. I was a freshman in high school, 15 years old. And so I always loved um, taking time off from school whenever I could. And Wait, wait, wait. It was Memorial Day? Yes, it was Memorial Day. But I don't consider Memorial Day my injury day. I consider the 31st. Memorial gotcha. Day just happened to fall on the 31st. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So actually, when you invited me to speak, I was like, oh, I wonder if he's doing it because of Memorial Day. I had no idea. I had no idea. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that actually turns out pretty cool. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. But cool. uh, yeah, so, so it was on Memorial Day 2010, and I went to the beach with a group of my friends. I want to give like a little background about the kind of type of person yeah. I am. Um, so I've lived in Southern California my, my whole life. I'm 25 years old right now, and I grew up going to the beach pretty much every summer with my, my mom. I remember her taking me there, you know, every week at least, and going in the water, boogie boarding. I was a very active child growing up. I'm the oldest of four siblings. I have three younger, and, you know, I've always been attracted to extreme sports. I, used, I really enjoyed surfing, riding dirt bikes, skateboarding. I took boxing classes. I did karate. My freshman year of high school, I wrestled. And so one of the things that I always like to say that cracks me up is my mom has told me multiple times that I was more work by myself than my three younger siblings combined. And wow. so I, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a little proud of that. But um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, own that. 
Yeah, so I I in the role of the typical older brother very well. You know, I I love to pick on my little siblings, not in a mean way, but I was a very hands-on physical older brother. You know, I like to physically do stuff to them and you know, I would when I was told not to do something for some reason, it just I wanted to do it more just to get the reactions. So mm-hmm. um, I was definitely kind of a handful, a wild child. And, um, but yeah, that's just kind of a little bit about me, the person I was before my accident. So going back to that day, um, I went to the beach with one of my best friends, Travis, who I actually, I've known him since preschool. So he's basically like my brother from another mother. I mm-hmm. would spend almost every weekend I can remember um, at his house, staying the night and just doing stuff with him. So uh, I went to the beach with him and we were meeting a group of his friends that I didn't really know at the beach um, on this day. And we actually, I convinced my parents to let me go. They happened to be going to a barbecue that day, but I didn't want to go. And I convinced them to drop me off at Travis's house. And we actually, ended up, we took the, the beach, to, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the bus to the beach. So wow. we hopped on we got, we had a boogie boards and got on a bus stop. <laughs> went all the way down there and it was it was a cool experience I don't think we had done that before maybe one time and so yeah we we got down there dropped off at Newport Beach 42nd Street and yeah. headed out onto the sand and found our friends and uh as soon as we dropped our stuff down we headed straight to the water and I remember the water being really cold that day um I remember that the sun being hot but the water wasn't quite warmed up yet so um, I went to the edge of the water and had a wave roll over my feet. And I remember when the water hit my foot, it sent like chills up my spine because it was cold, but I didn't care. I was happy. I had the day uh, off. Right. I was at the beach with my friends. Life was good. And so yeah. we went into the water. We hung out there for a few hours and then decided to get out to get some lunch. And we ended up walking to, I don't remember the name of it, but it was a, sandwich, a local sandwich shop that we walked to to get some lunch. Then after we ate, we walked back to our spot and kind of just laid out on the sand and then before we knew it the day was already coming to an end and we got a call from Travis's mom she was coming to pick us up so we were like okay we probably have about 30 45 more minutes until his mom's here so let's go in the water one more time before we go and then so I remembered the water being cold that day and so I had grown up at the beach knowing when the water's cold the best way to get used to it is just jump right in And so that was kind of my mindset going back into the water. And we all stood up and started running towards the water. Um, As soon as my feet hit, I saw a wave coming at me. And in my mind, I was like, okay, I'm going to dive into this wave and just get super, just get used to it really quick. And so Travis was right next to me to my right. I remember looking at him and then looking straight ahead and dove headfirst into this wave. And I ended up diving headfirst into a sandbar that was underneath the water, which is basically, um, I don't know if anyone else has been at the beach, sometimes it'll be super shallow and then it'll get super deep and then it'll be shallow again. So it's kind of just like hills of sand that are underneath the wave that you can't see. And the current was pretty strong that day. And so that's why I think there was, there was just sandbars and they were moving throughout the day as the current. And I unfortunately just dove into the wrong place at the wrong time and hit the, the sandbar head first. I instantly, I didn't know at the time, but I instantly broke my neck and suffered spinal cord damage, which paralyzed me instantly. So I was laying face down in the water, still fully conscious. I was aware the whole time. And all of a sudden, I just couldn't move anything. And it was an indescribable feeling that my entire body went completely numb. The best way I can describe it is kind of when your arm or leg falls asleep, not the the feeling of like ants that are, it's all the tingling feeling, but kind of the numbness and lack of sensation is how my entire body felt. And so uh, no pain. Uh, A lot of people ask me, wow, that must've hurt, but I felt nothing. And so I'm laying there face down in the water, um, thinking about what, what just happened. Like I knew something horrible had happened. I just got this weird feeling. And, uh, but I didn't realize I had, that I was paralyzed. And one thing that um, I didn't mention before is my dad had a talk with me when he drove me to Travis's house and telling me to be careful about diving and neck injuries and that I could break my neck. 
and he knew the type of kid I was, you know, I was <laughs> right. a child. I like to push the limits. Um, and I was just super active and stuff. So it's crazy thinking back, you know, that, that he, he told me that. And when I was laying face on the water, that conversation went through my head and I was like, Oh my God, it just clicked. I, I, I realized I, I, this is what breaking my neck is like and getting paralyzed. I had just done that. So after I came to that realization, you know, I'm laying in, in the water, you know, I'm 15 years old. I know the type of kid I was. And I, I thought my friends were going to look at me and just be like, Oh, he's just messing around, you know, doing typical Zach stuff. I was a jokester. And so I figured by the time they realized that something serious had happened, I would have drowned basically. And, um, so with those thoughts running through my head, you know, I, I pretty much accepted that I was going to die that day because I didn't think they would be able to understand what happened or realize something was wrong in time. Yeah. yeah. So I have that. I started thinking about, I didn't get to say goodbye to my parents. You know, I'm 15 years old. This can't be how, you know, I go out. I'm way too young. I have so much life to live and there's absolutely nothing I could do. I couldn't even lift my head or turn my head out of the water to take a breath. And so, you know, I was like, wow, this is it. God, um, you know, I, I pray to God asking him to save my life and just not letting today be the day. And so I don't know how long I was face down in the water for. And then all of a sudden I felt this weird feeling on my back, like a very, very light feeling like someone had like tapped me. Um, someone came over and like poked me on my back. And so I remember like feeling, okay, what is that? What is that? But I, I had no idea. And it, it was my buddy, Travis, who- And you're still yeah, face down. I'm still face down in the water. And so, again, I don't know how long I was underwater, oh, man. Long, you know, it was definitely over 30 seconds. Um, wow. Now we say like a minute, but I, I don't really know exactly, you know, time goes yeah. really slow when you're, when you're like that. Right, um, right. And so after, um, you know, my injury, I ended up talking to him and he was, I asked him, I'm like, dude, like what, what happened when you like came over? And he's like, I saw you floating face down and he's like, I want to mess with you. So I ran over to your body and slapped you on your back as hard as I could. And I was like, are you serious? It literally, it felt like you just like tapped me. He's like, no, dude, I slapped you on your back so hard. And he's like, I slapped you and like, you didn't even flinch. And he, he was like, I remember thinking to myself, wow, that's really weird. And then after that, he started to see my body float back out with the tide. And for some reason, he's like, dude, when I saw that, He's like, I knew something was wrong. He's like, something just told me to flip you over and pull you out of the water. Mm. And, you know, I, it, it, it had to have been God because I know Travis isn't like a super religious person. And I don't know, him telling me he just got this like sense, you know, that something was really wrong with me. And so then I, I just remember being flipped over um, to my back and I was staring straight up into the sun uh, and I took a huge breath of air and he's like, I heard you like take a huge breath of air. And he's like, I don't know. But he's like, my instinct was I just grabbed you under your armpits and started pulling you out of the water. Mm. And so I was 160 pounds my freshman year of high school. I was 5'9". Um, I was a year above all my friends. Uh, and so I was, I was a lot bigger. And Travis is like, he was probably 130 30 pounds, you know, 5'6", a lot smaller than me. And he was pulling me out of the water. And so while I was floating in the water, my weight was really light just because of the water. And so once he started getting me closer to the shore and my body started, you know, getting out of the water, I was just pure dead weight. And he was struggling to just pull me out of the water. Waves were coming over like my body and hitting me in the face. And he was trying to not like, he was trying to keep my, my face from getting hit with the waves and pull me far enough out of the water where he could where I was basically safe. So I remember being pulled out of the water and then I looked out of the corner of my eye. I could see my arms above my head. And once he got me to a safe enough spot, he let go. And I remember just looking at my arms and they flopped to the ground like they were not a part of my body. I, they, they were like wet noodle arms is how I describe it. And seeing that just like, I don't know, I got another hit of just like, wow, th this is, this is serious. And, you know, I tried to move them and it felt like 
my arms felt like the heaviest thing in the world. I, I couldn't move them. Yeah, I saw them attached to my body. And so I believe I was in shock at the time because I, I knew, I, I was like, I can't move. I can't move, get a lifeguard. But I couldn't talk. Nothing was coming out. Um, and I remember Travis looking me in the face like, like what's wrong? What, what, what's wrong? And I kept trying to say something and nothing would come out. And then eventually, finally, I could just, I just kept saying, I just kept repeating myself. I can't move. I can't move. I think I'm paralyzed. And so after a while it clicked and, and like I saw the look in his eyes and he just left and ran to get a lifeguard while he was doing that. Everyone else I was with at the beach that day was getting out of the water and, and came over to me and was like, all right, you know, Zach, this isn't funny. Like stop messing around. And I just kept saying like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. And, uh, then Travis came back with a lifeguard and, uh, again, I just kept saying, like, I can't move anything. I think I'm paralyzed. And so he was like, okay, like, don't move, don't move. Um, I'm going to call 911. And then I'm just laying there, you know, in the sand wet. I'm, I'm like covered in sand because he just dragged me out of the water and um, just looking up in the sun and just, you know, I don't even really remember everything, but Travis was like, dude, you were just like crying and telling me you can't move and stuff. So and then I, I hear the ambulance sirens in the background. And I remember thinking to myself, how weird is it? Because I know they're coming for me. You know, um, it, I, I hear sirens all the time. And it was just something different knowing that, that they were coming for me. And so, you know, they, they ended up getting there. The first thing they did was put my neck in a brace. Um, and then they were asking me questions. They lifted me onto a stretcher and then put me in the ambulance and then were um, ask one of my friends, like, who, like, who knows me the best, who, who, like, knows my, like, my contact information, and so Travis was like, I do, and they're like, all right, jump in, you're coming with us to the hospital, and, um, you know, Travis is a year younger than me, so he's probably 14, and wow. I can imagine, like, the thoughts going through his head, you know, and so he's in the ambulance with me, they're putting, like, oxygen over my face, they're sticking a needle in my arm for an IV, they're telling him everything that they're doing, while they're doing it to me and he's just like oh my gosh like this is just just insane so he's trying to call my parents get a hold of them they're at this barbecue right now and um my brother levi it was one of his really good friends houses and so levi wasn't there and so um levi's uh levi's friend kept asking my parents hey you know can you call levi is he gonna be here in the meantime my mom had her phone in her purse travis has been trying to call her and she's not answering so she goes over to her phone to call Levi and sees like all these missed calls and a voicemail from Travis. And she listens to it. And basically he's like, Amber, uh, Zach was in an accident and we're on the way to the hospital. Call me back now. So then she hears that, then just starts trying to call Travis, finally gets through to him. And she's like, Travis, what's wrong? And I talked to my mom later about this. And she was like, in her head, knowing me, she thought I'd just like maybe cut myself really bad. I had to go get like stitches or, you know, um, I got hurt pretty bad, but nothing compared to what really had happened. Yeah. Yeah. So she's like, Travis, Travis. Okay. Like what's wrong. And this part always like <laughs> gets me emotional, mm -hmm. but she was like, Travis, was like Amber, Zach's not moving. Zach's not moving. And so yeah, I don't, know. I don't know. That that always just I can't mm. I can't imagine like what my mom like what the thoughts that were going through my mom's head were at that time, telling yeah. you know so my fr my friend telling her her son just wasn't moving. Wow. <laughs> and so then they left from that barbecue and headed straight to the hospital. I go straight to the hospital, um, and because I was 15 at the time, they took me to Hogue, and. Um, this part, I don't remember everything exactly. Um, I do know my parents got there and I actually was then transported with a broken neck still from Hogue Hospital to Chuck. And that's where I laid there for a few days because I guess when I broke my neck, um, the swelling was really bad and the doctors couldn't do surgery. Um, and they also didn't want to do surgery with my neck being swollen because of the spinal cord and how sensitive that is. They just didn't want to risk, you know, possibly making my situation worse. So I actually laid in a hospital bed for 
a good two to three days. Oh, and it was Memorial Day, so there was no surgeons. Right. And all the doctors like weren't working, and the ones that were working already had scheduled surgeries, so no one could do an emergency surgery on me. Um, so I believe that was Monday, and then I think it was Wednesday when I actually had my surgery. Mm. And so that could be a whole other story. Like I'm always wondering, like I wonder if they did surgery on me then if you know i would have gotten more function back than i did um, i learned after that a lot like they should have just put me in ice they should have just like put my body in ice so that forced the swelling to go down but it's okay um, so then um i go to uh, chalk hospital they do the surgery um, i remember waking up um, not really knowing where i was and trying to like move and i just i couldn't move and then I tried to talk to like call a nurse, but I had a huge tube going down my throat into my lungs that was helping me breathe. So I woke up with this tube in my mouth and all I could try to do was just like push it out with my tongue. And then a nurse came and was like, okay, Zach, like stop, stop, stop. Um, she explained who she was. You know, there's a tube down my throat. She's like, let me go get the doctor. And so the doctor comes in. He's like, all right, Zach, you know, um, I can take this tube out of your throat, but if I take it out and you can't breathe on your own, I'm going to have to put it back down while you're conscious and it's not going to be a pleasant thing. So he was like, blink, blink once. If you understand, and I blink once. And he's like, all right, blink twice. If you want me to take it, take it out. And I blink twice. And so he took this tube out on my, my throat. And I remember just like tripping out and seeing like how long it was, you know, I was like, how is this thing like down my throat? And um, thankfully I was able to breathe on my own and they put just like an oxygen a little oxygen mask under my nose so I could get some little more oxygen to my, my brain. And then um, after that, I remember having my parents come in and I just wanted to get up and give them a hug, but you know, I couldn't do that. And so um, I, I, I remember telling them, uh, you know, I had a smile on my face and I was like, it's okay, mom, you know, I'm still alive. Still not really understanding the severity of, of, of my accident. Um, right. And so basically, you know, I, I told the doctors, you know, I just don't sugarcoat it. I, I don't want you to be around the bush. I'd rather you just tell me up front. Um, and so they basically told me that I had broken my neck and suffered spinal cord damage. I completely shattered my C4 vertebrae. So when I, when my neck was broken, I had broken pieces of bone floating next to my spinal cord. And in hindsight, I, like if I moved my neck at that time, any twist or turn could have like, could like made me way worse off. So I think back as Travis was pulling me out of the water, you know, and then letting go of me on the sand, like, you know, how I didn't like move my neck more and get more parallel. Because I, I read a book about another guy who broke his neck at Huntington Beach doing the exact same thing. And as he was getting pulled out of the water, his, his head was just like cranking back and forth. He said he could hear like, like broken bones and like all these like, and he would get sharp pains going up his body. And, you know, he ended up not being able to move anything below his neck. Um, wow. And his, his book is just amazing. Um, so, you know, it made me think about that. And uh, so they did the surgery on my neck. They pulled out all the broken pieces of bone. They replaced it with a, a donor bone that, uh, the doctor ended up setting, said fit perfectly. Um, the surgery went well. And so he was like, yeah, you most likely, I mean, I can't remember word for word, but basically they're like, you know, you suffer a spinal cord injury. Um, obviously I'm like, okay, well, am I, am I going to get better? Am I going to walk again? And they're like, you know, you walking again is probably less than a 1% chance. And wow. him, I remember being told that all that information and still kind of being like, no, like that, that's not going to be me. And mm -hmm. that summer I had planned to fly out to New Mexico to visit one of my best friends, Dylan, who I had grown up with my, um, I grew up with him in elementary school and in, in the middle school, he uh, moved to New Mexico. His parents were divorced and he went to go live with his dad. And I was devastated because Dylan was one of my best friends and he was my, also my gaming buddy. I love to play video games. I have like my active friend of a group, uh, friend group because I love right. to active, but I also love to stay home and play video games. Mm -hmm. So he he was my gamer buddy, and uh, I had bought a plane ticket that summer to go fly out and visit him. So you know when the doctors told me this my disinformation, you know in my head I was like, well, you know 
I'll, I'll be ready by then. You know, that's a few weeks away, you know, and then the few weeks went by and I wasn't better. And then I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll just postpone it. You know, I'll eventually get to get out there. And slowly over time, all these things that I kind of told myself I would be able to do, I just had to cancel it. And slowly over time, I think I accepted the reality of my situation. Hmm. And I think that's one of the big reasons why I didn't really get depressed because of my accident. Hmm. Is it slowly settled in over time instead of just hating me all at once? Um, and so after, after the hospital, I, I got transferred to a rehabilitation center in Pomona called Casa Kalina. And from, uh, from the hospital, I went there and I was there for about eight or nine weeks, basically just learning to live my new life in a, in a wheelchair and um, doing, doing physical therapy. The doctors always tell anyone that has a spinal cord injury, you're going to get the most uh, movement back within the first year. So do as much physical therapy as you can. So in our, in our heads, we're like, yeah, okay, let's do that. So I did as much physical therapy as I could. In hindsight, that's not necessarily true. Um, people get function back, you know, years after the injury. It's really weird. But um, I know a lot of stories that people have gotten movement back. They never had five, 10 years post-injury. And so after Costa Kalina, um, you know, they were like, all right, well, you know, you can only stay there for a certain amount of time and they basically kick you out. And you're on, on to basically live, live your life now in a wheelchair. And while I was in um, Casa Clina, my dad was remodifying our bathroom because I now had to have a roll-in shower. And um, luckily, I lived in a one-story house. And about a year before, my parents had just remodeled the floor with hardwood and tile. And before that, it was carpet, which is great because carpet and wheelchairs don't go together. And, <laughs> Yeah, he was basically making some mod some small modifications to the house. So when I went back home, it was all ready. And then he yeah. installed a, a ramp that goes in our back slider door that I can roll in. And so, yeah. After I love that, your mom and dad. Your mom and dad are just heroes to me. I mean, yeah, you know. Solid people. I think also a big reason why I've been able to handle my accident the way I have and, you know, maintain a, a smile on my face is just because of the support system. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I, I got to ask you though, because you know now you're facing it, it, it in today's time when we hear this new normal, right? We hear this new normal. Yeah, new normal. It's like no, you were facing a completely new normal, and and for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, when did that sink in that this was going to be um, a permanent situation, and then and then. Obviously, you've made some vast improvements since that time, so yeah. we'll talk about those too. But um, the fact that you, at some point, you said you, you came to kind of just realize and accept that this was what it was going to be. But at, at some point, you made a decision to no, no longer accept that. And what was normal that became a new normal is now completely eradicated with a whole completely new normal for you now. And engaged driving a car we're gonna talk about some of that this is cool stuff yeah yeah you know i don't remember a specific time when it like just hit me like i said it, it was weird i just i kind of slowly accepted little things over time and then by the time you know i really fully accepted it i was like you know what okay you know this is the reality of my situation what do i need to do to just still live my life and you know and create a future for myself I think that was like my old, that was my ultimate question in fear was, okay, you know, I'm paralyzed. What happened happened. I can't go back and I can't change that day, but what can I do to create a future for myself? Because now I'm a quadriplegic. Um, you know, I, I have use of my arms, but I have no use of my wrist or hands. Um, so I, I, I can't do a lot of things um, anymore. You know, I need a lot of uh, help with my care, getting dressed, getting up, you know, and a lot of other things. And so, you know, yeah, let, let's talk about that because you put a video out on YouTube mm -hmm. that blew me away with your mom helping you get out of bed, get ready for the day, yeah. shower the whole bit. Dude, I, man, I watched that and I had to shut it off. I mean, I don't think I ever told you this. I watched it. And as I was watching, I'm like, I can't, I can't even imagine. And I shut it off and I said, 
I need to watch this. I yeah. need to know how really tough it is. And I've watched it several times since then. Dude, I blows me away. Yeah. And so my, my reason for doing that was, and this, I made this video um, probably like two or three years ago. So it's been, it was like seven years after my accident. And I have realized that whenever I go to school or I go out and interact with people, they already see me up and ready and dressed for the day. They have no idea what goes into getting me ready and dressed for the day. And so I want to record a raw video of me getting up, you know, how I get showered, how I get dressed, how I get transferred. And I want it to be like as real as possible. And, you know, I showed, you know, obviously I can't show myself naked showering, but I'm pretty much um, naked. And it shows my mom showering me, shows my mom getting me dressed. And, you know, I just wanted people to know, you know, this is, this is what goes on behind the scenes that no one else sees or knows about. And so I'm yeah. going to post a link to that video um, in this so people can go back and watch that as well. But yeah. Yeah. So go on. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you know, when you did that, I'm like, wow, he's, I mean, this is like gut wrenching. And yet when you explained why you did it, I'm like, that is, that is so cool. Um, such vulnerability. I mean, yeah. what's the, what's the thing that, that you missed the most shortly after the accident what's the thing that you missed the most oh 100 percent. just just independence i was uh i was a very independent person growing up i uh, my parents would always joke with me and would say zach you know you're you're gonna have your bags packed by the front door ready to move out the day of your 18th birthday and so i i, I was i was a really independent person i loved doing stuff on my own i didn't like asking for help i like to just figure it out and so, you know, breaking my neck took that away 100%. When I was first injured, I couldn't do anything on my own. I couldn't even raise my hand to my face to itch my nose. And so that was probably, that was probably the hardest thing for me was just having my independence taken away. Yeah. And, you know, that's still my biggest goal every day is just to be as independent as I can. Well, you know, um, I don't think I've ever shared this with you. I thought about it a couple of months back, but... Um, Remember you guys when you guys came to my house the first time on the beach? Yeah. And um, so I had I have these at the at my house I have this deck um, that is right on the sand in in Newport Beach and so but there was a couple of steps to get up there and so I remember you know getting uh, you know everyone being there and hanging out well the wind caught this umbrella and smacked me in the head and I mean literally gave me a concussion I I was just like dazed. Did and you I remember sitting down and everyone's like, you okay? You okay? And I'm like, and I remember thinking this ain't nothing compared to what Zach's dealing with. So just shut up. Oh my and gosh. And so I just sat there going, Oh man, I felt terrible. But I was like, I cannot, I cannot even fathom me giving any attention to this when Zach's sitting there. So uh, that, yeah, again, no. it's that way that you're encouraging people without even having to say anything. You're just being that living testimony of survival. Your key word, I still remember your key word. Your key word is persevere. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's like my word I live by. Persevere, perseverance. Um, you know, I, I have it tattooed on my arm. And so, so cool. you know, I, that's just like a word I, I, I try to live my life by. And to me, it just means, you know, just keep moving forward. You know, I can't go, I mean, I can't go back and change what happened to me, you know, but I do, I can control what's ahead of me. And yeah. so, you know, that, I just, that just means, you know, keep, keep moving forward and don't, don't give up. And yeah. so, you know. And independence, getting yeah. independence. I mean, we talked about it to accept the fact that you may never drive again or walk again or anything else. And then all of a sudden to just, to be in a car and being able to drive yourself. And you said the other day, you decided you were going to go to the store or something and you just, I'm going to go do it by myself and just went. Yeah. That's got to be an amazing feeling that most of us just take so much for granted. Yeah. What was that, that first time you got behind the wheel by yourself? What was that like? So, you know, when, when, when I realized that the possibility of me being able to drive was actually something that could happen, I was just like blown away and super excited. Then when I got behind the car for the first time, I was terrified. I was like, I don't know if I can do this because – you know, I imagine like, I mean, I even look at myself and I'm like, I can't even, I don't have any use of my hands or my wrists. You know, I'm in a wheelchair. Like, 
how am I going to drive? You know, and I imagine like people looking at me and like, oh my gosh, you know, like I'm going to stay away from this guy. <laughs> but, you know, it was, it was scary at first. Yeah. And, uh, but I knew that what, what it was going to give me was just going to absolutely outweigh any fear I had and of doing it. It's going to, it was going to open doors for me that, you know, I never thought would be able to be opened. Um, it's going to give me like, I think driving is a, is the biggest thing that will give me the, the most independence I'll ever have, you know, yeah. just being able to now drive myself to school, to work, to run errands, you know, up until now, um, but at, at the end of this month, the 31st will be 10 years. I've had to have someone drive me everywhere I want to go up until then. You know, I have to rely on people, you know, not that it's a bad thing, but you know, it's always fun having to rely on someone. Um, well, I remember. Up. I remember some of the posts that you made on Facebook, like when you were wanting to go to a concert, or you were yeah. wanting to go to a Ducks game, because I know you're yeah. a huge Ducks fan. Go, and you I couldn't, couldn't. And couldn't find I had, someone. I couldn't find someone who'd want to. Who'd want to buy a ticket? So you know, there's multiple times when I'd be like, okay, you know, I'll buy your ticket, right. and I'll buy mine if you just drive me. You know. Right. right. So yeah, I that, that, that was really hard for me. That was tough, man. That was it was. I got to tell you, it was tough to read because it was just like, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not able to go that night or whatever. And I was like, but dude, I, oh man, I was just so painful to, yeah. to know that you were wanting to go so bad and, and you were, you were so dependent on somebody else. You know, um, I want to bring up this, this fact because you've, you've gone back to the ocean and you went back and you were on a, on a boogie board, right? On a surfboard or something. Yeah, I did adaptive surfing. I loved yeah. it. So it was like, uh, how do, yeah, it's already summer again. So it was last year. And yeah. there's, there's an event that is put on every year. It's called Life Rolls On. And they yep. basically um, are an organization that helps people with any type of disability. You don't just have to have a spinal cord injury. But they basically um, gear you up with like 10 volunteers and they get you out on the water on a board and they get you out and they push you into a wave. And there's people set up throughout um, the water on your way back, you know, in case you fall off because that happens. And um, I had known about it for years and I actually went one year previously, but kind of uh, chickened out because I was a little scared and also didn't. A wanna... little scared, dude, I would be petrified. Um, well, it's funny that the biggest part for me was, um, the first time I went, they wanted people to put on a wetsuit. And I'm like, you know what? I didn't want to go through the amount of work it would take just to get me in a wetsuit. Mm. And so I kind of used that as my excuse. And, and, you know, I was there that day. I hung out. I watched it happen. It was awesome. But, you know, I just don't think I was ready. Then, like, a few years later, which happened to be last year, I was like, you know what? Like, I want to do this. Like, it would be such a cool thing for me to do and accomplish, especially because my, my accident was in the water. Um, and so, yeah, last year I did it. And I also had the, I made a YouTube video about that uh, as well. Um, and so. That was so yeah, cool when I saw that. I was like, yes. Man, that, like, that is truly facing the fear and overcoming it. Yeah. Well, before that, a few years before that, this was, this was probably even more, um, I don't know, monumental for me. I can't think of the right word. But um, a few years after my accident, I was at my church and they announced that they were going to do a baptism at the beach and I want to get rebaptized. And I, I volunteered and normally they went to a special beach that had this cove that didn't have any waves and that's where they did the baptisms, but it was not accessible and I couldn't get to this cove. So I had to go out into the water where the normal wow. waves were coming and I had people carry me. I had a wall of people in front of me that were trying to block the waves from hitting us. And I had my dad and my brother hold me in the water with my pastor uh, right next to me. And then they just dumped me under the water. And I wanted to do that because I thought it was like a double. Um, Rebirth. A double, yeah, um, thing for me to do on top of, you know, breaking my neck in the ocean and then getting baptized in the ocean where I broke my neck. And so, yeah, that, that was an amazing experience. That is so cool. So let's, let's uh, you went to college. Yeah. You're now getting your master's? My master's in counseling, yeah. So <laughs> you're, just, you're yeah. unstoppable. <laughs> yeah, I wish, beast. Me, I wish you would have known me before my accident because I did not give a crap about school. You know, 
I was happy with C's. All I cared about was I passed. Um, I was not an academic student. I, I, I never planned on going to college. I was happy to be, I was satisfied with having a, a high school education. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, yeah, my freshman year, I never planned on going to college. After I broke my neck, my sophomore year, I was homeschooled. Then my junior and senior year, I went back just for my electives so I could interact with my friends. I was very adamant that I did not want to get held back. I got the option to take a year off from high school, but I, I did not want to. I wanted to graduate with all my friends. So then it wasn't until my senior year that I got an, um, I heard about a, a scholarship program that helps um, individuals with spinal cord injuries um, pay for college to get an education. So my senior year goes around and my mom's like, Zach, have you thought about what you want to do after high school? And I was like, no, honestly, I don't know what I want to do. And she's like, well, what about college? And I was like, yeah, you know, I guess, you know, I don't know if I have the grades. I sure as heck can't afford it. Um, but after a while, you know, I applied for the scholarship, got accepted. Um, my senior year of, of high school, which is supposed to be the easiest year, ended up being my hardest because I didn't take any of the, uh, the prerequisite classes in order to even get accepted into a university. So I took seven classes my senior year, um, passed them. Um, I graduated. I, this was probably like my first big accomplishment since my accident. I had two of my physical therapists drive down from uh, Carlsbad where I was doing physical therapy and they brought a walker and they helped me walk in front of my entire graduating class to wow. get my diploma. And yes. so um, I have a video on that as well. And yeah, that was just a great experience. But after that, I went right into, I graduated that summer and that fall, I started my first semester at Cal State Fullerton. And um, that college was just, there's so many things I could talk about. Um, one I wanna talk about briefly, just because it was a huge deal to me was, sure. um, I got to live on campus for about a year and a half in on-campus apartments. The dorms were too small and not accessible for me. They I didn't know that they had on-campus apartments, but they usually give those to the juniors and seniors, not, not freshmen and sophomores. But they made an exception for me. And I had a four-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment. And they gave me three rooms, one for me to sleep in. Um, and they're tiny. So with my medical supplies, you know, that took up my entire room I slept in. Then they gave me an office to have my books, um, just to have room where I could go do my schoolwork. And they gave me a third room for a caregiver to sleep in, but they only made me pay for one room. Wow. So they were very accommodating and super cool. I think partly because I was the first quadriplegic that they had living on campus. So, mm. you know, I think that made them look a little good, you know, but it also benefited me. So, you know, that was awesome. And you know, awesome. I got to experience what it was like living independently, you know, not with my mom. Um, I lived with just a caregiver. And he didn't live there full time. He just slept there. So during the day, I was on my own. And, you know, I think that was the first time I really got to experience true freedom and independence, you know. Yeah. And I got to live a little bit of that college lifestyle, you know, staying up late, going to bed when I want to go to bed. And it was awesome because I could just roll out of my building and go to class. And, yeah. you know, that was like the first taste of independence that I got. Yeah. And after that, I was like, I was hooked. So, so, so you bring up a great point, this caregiver. Uh -huh. And now you have a new caregiver. Let's I talk do. about this new caregiver because it sounds like a, it's a lot more appealing than the last yeah. one. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've had multiple caregivers in the past, but um, my main one right now, especially with the COVID-19 going on, is uh, my fiance, Brianna. And so I met her. We met each other a little over two years, two years ago. We met online on a dating app. And so I had been wanting to do dating after my accident but you know probably for the first five years six years after my accident um you know I, I was really insecure about about my my wheelchair and on top of the fact that you know i don't have my hands i don't drive i can't pick up a date you know um i think by then i had taught myself to feed myself again and so i had a lot of insecurities and did not do any dating after my accident i wanted to but i just was not confident in myself and so you know that was when like online dating kind of got pretty big. And so I downloaded a few different apps, went on some dates, 
Um, so how did you overcome that? I mean, the insecurity. I mean, we're insecure about the stupidest thing: our hair, a pimple, uh, you know, all this. Other, and then here's the thing: you're in a wheelchair. You you can't feed yourself. You can't do all this. How did you overcome that? Well, you know, it's forcing yourself to go out of your comfort zone. There, there's no easy thing. You know, I I was scared shitless to go on my first date with a girl, you know, but I was like, I'm never going to do that if I don't force myself to do something I'm afraid of. And so, yeah, you know, I can't tell you how fast my heart was beating, the first day I went on, um, you know, and, you know, I, I made sure like in all my profile pictures, you know, I showed my wheelchair because I wanted people to know. And, you know, the, the first day I went on we just talked and, you know, it, it was awesome. It went way better than what, how I thought it was going to go in my head. So that kind of gave me the confidence to keep doing it, you know, and I went on more dates. Um, and at that time, you know, I, I wanted, I was looking for something serious. I I'm, wasn't the type of guy that, you know, just wanted to have some one night stands or just have a fling with a girl for a little while and then move on. Right. I was looking for something serious. And it's funny, all the girls up until then, you know, at the point I was like, after a while, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm developing feelings. It, I want to, you know, be official. Uh, a lot of them didn't want that. So, you know, I was like, well, if this isn't going to go anywhere farther than what it's going to be, I don't want to hurt myself because I know I'm going to get hurt. Um, you know, they ended up getting hurt too and stuff. So I was like, you know, after that, if I date someone and we are not on the same page, then I'm just not going to do it. And so I stopped for a while, then re-downloaded apps, um, didn't find anything, got kind of frustrated because I was being impatient, um, and deleted the apps. And then I got a random message on my Instagram um, from a girl who, it was, who uh, ended up being Brie. And she had found my profile on a few different dating apps, messaged me on there, but because I had the apps deleted, I never got them. Luckily, in my bio, I left my Instagram tag. And so she looked me up on Instagram and then reached out to me on there. And um, yeah, and then I came to found out she lived in Temecula, which is like a solid hour away from me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, instantly that discouraged me because at the time I wasn't driving. You know, I'm trying to look for something serious. I don't want to do a long distance relationship and I can't get out there. So I ended up talking to her, kind of explaining my situation. And she's like, well, I'll, I'll come out to you for our first date. And I felt super bad. I'm like, even if she comes down, like, I don't, I don't, I'm honestly like, don't see the point of this, but she was super, you know, cool with it. So I was like, all right, what, is, what what's one, one thing going to hurt one date? We'll see what happens. She drove down to me, picked me up at my parents' house, met my mom and my grandma for the first time. This is the first time I'm meeting her in person. She has to learn how to tie my wheelchair down in my wheelchair accessible van. Then we drive off to go on a date. And so, um, yeah, I, it was probably one of the best dates I ever had in my life. We, you know, I disclosed basically almost everything I'm talking to you about right now, just of my accident, what happened to me, you know, the things I can't do. Um, and, you know, she talks to me about some trauma that she went through in the past and we just opened ourselves up. We talked about things that wow. people, probably haven't even talked about when they've been dating for six months <laughs> right um, right that you know so yeah yeah we just shared our deepest darkest secrets um we went and got sushi it was a bonus that she loves sushi because i love sushi <laughs> so i was stoked that she liked that type of food and then after that we went and got starbucks and then she dropped me back off at home and then after that we went on some a few more dates and then i asked her to be my girlfriend um then we dated for a while long distance and then i got this opportunity to live in this apartment building where I am now and we ended up moving in together. And so, yeah, then now we're, we're living together. We've lived together for over a year and a half. Um, I asked her to marry me. We're engaged. And so, yeah, you know, Man. My life is, Dude. life is good. I'm going to school still. And, you know, like I said, going back to college, I can honestly say like, I never would have thought that I would have a college degree let alone be pursuing a freaking master's degree, you know? That's so cool. You, I, have, more, you have more courage than me because I didn't even finish college, so yeah, you're I, already way ahead of me. I like to say that, you know, in these 10 years I've been paralyzed, I believe I've honestly accomplished more in my life right now at 25, almost 26, than I would have in my entire previous life had my accident never happened. 
So, wow. Wow. you know, it, it really is, you know, it is yeah. amazing if I look at the things that this disability has, you know, allowed me, allowed me to experience, you know, the doors that's open for me, there's no way I would have had a college education had my accident never happened. So you, I, I heard you call it a disability. I know some people get offended when it's called a disability. What, how do you feel about that? I mean, what, I what's your take? It doesn't bother me because, you know, in a way it is a disability. Um, but there are actually, I'm even learning my cal in my counseling, co uh, my counseling class. One of them we learned about, you have to say, um, not, you don't say a disabled person. You say a person with a disability is like the right terminology for the counseling field because <laughs> you don't want to offend them. But to me, right. you know, uh, it doesn't really bother me. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. well hey, I want to I want to open it up for people to ask questions if they want questions. We got people watching on Facebook Live too, but um, we can only take questions here. So if, uh, if if you guys have a question, go ahead and raise your hand so we can we can do that. Um, I want to be respectful because I know we've got to he's got to get going to Temecula down where hope's at. Yes. So, um, think, um, if we go over uh, past 11, that's okay. 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 Um, so who wants to ask a question? Okay. Flo, let's go ahead. I'll unmute you and you can bring yourself on camera. Flo. There she hey, is. Zach. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Gosh. Um, the other day we had a person on with no arms. And she embraced her, she called it um, uniqueness. And yeah. you're another one that is em truly embracing your uniqueness. Um, yeah. So thanks again for sharing. Um, I just wanted to say, what's next for, for Zach? I know you've mm. got a lot going, um, yeah. but what's next? No, that's a great question. So right now, um, my my main priority is to finish my master's in counseling. I'm only going part-time, um, mainly because actually where I live, it's um, affordable housing. And in order to qualify, you can only be a part-time student, which I thought was a little ridiculous, but I can see because they want people that live here to be working part-time and going to school. Um, but the whole reason I'm getting a college education, a master's degree is so I can work. Um, but so I'm only going part-time. It's going to take me longer. I just finished my halfway mark, my two years. I have another two years and then I'll be done. And um, right now with this whole COVID thing going on, all my classes got switched to online and, you know, I have a lot more time on my hands. So even with school right now, you know, I, I kind of feel like I'm lacking purpose and meaning right now. I, I have been using a lot of my time just going on my phone, playing video games and watching Netflix, you know, and so that's something that's been, at first it was nice, but now I'm like, all right, Zach, you got to do something more productive with your time. So I'm, I'm currently um, trying to write a book about uh, basically a memoir about my accident and everything that's happened, everything that I've learned and stuff. So um, I was super productive with that when this first thing happened. And now I'm just like, oh my gosh, I dread it. But I force myself to do it because this is something I really want to do. And so right now with, I'd say, um, working on school and working on my book are, are my two big things that I'm, I'm doing right now. Awesome. Well, good luck with that. And I know for sure you'll, knowing you, you'll accomplish it. So yeah. great. I'm Thanks. excited. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Go, um, Cindy, go ahead. Um, we need to take everyone off of camera while uh, somebody's asking a question. So if you're on camera now, go ahead and take yourself off. And then um, I see Hope raise her hand, so she can go. Yeah, and, and Christy had raised her hand too, so okay, I'm just cool. trying to go in order. Yeah. Um, Christy, go ahead. Okay. Hi, Zach. There you are. Hi. Thank you for sharing your your story. Really powerful, and I'm in California too, so awesome. we're not we're not far from each other. Um, and my question for you is, you know, going into counseling, do you have a certain focus of a certain age group you'd like to work with? What is, what is really calling you? Yeah, no, that's a good question. And that's something I'm actually currently struggling with because, you know, obviously I, I never plan on going down this path, but mm -hmm. you know, through my undergrad, I got my bachelor's in human services. And there was a class that I took during the summer called Character and Conflict. 
And it was basically like a therapy class where we broke into small groups. Each week we'd have a topic, whether it was death, love, you know, meaning of life, all this different stuff. And we'd have to talk about very personal and deep stuff. And I was told before going to this class that, you know, this class is going to be emotionally draining. It's going to be extremely rewarding, but you are going to feel so uncomfortable and, you know, you're going to have to definitely step out of your comfort zone. And that class, I felt in my natural habitat. I was going to say, did you say, look at me, I'm, a, I'm walking out of complete uncomfortable the rest of my life. I mean, yeah. I, I was like, that was probably the best class I'd ever taken. It was like the first time I realized I actually like look forward to going to class. Mm. And, you know, I'm, I'm an open person myself, so I love sharing. So that, that class made me think about going into counseling. And now that I'm in counseling, um, you know, with, with like my disability, um, being paralyzed, and even before my accident, um, I have never been an extremely emotional person. And especially with like how I deal with my, my disability, you know, I don't pay attention to a lot of the, the negative emotions that come with it. You know, okay. it's easy for me to just to think about all the things that I can't do anymore, the things that I lost, you know, and so I just don't really give those thoughts the time of day. And, but because of that, I'm like, great, I'm going to counseling. You know, I can't be like that. I got to be a more emotionally sensitive, empathetic, empath empathetic person. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's, I'm actually, that's a question I'm still working on myself. Hmm. I, if I could choose, I have always been drawn and loved like crime and like serial killers and, you know, um, trauma, like trauma. And I feel like because it's such a, it's such an intense thing. I feel like that's something I can handle and, you know, that would give me meaning. So whether that's working with children who, you know, have been sexually abused uh, children who have, you know, just, I don't know, been kidnapped, um, or any age group. Um, but I think it would be awesome if I could find some, some type of counseling job where I could counsel people, um, you know, that have been through a traumatic event, such as myself in the, in the like police force, um, or working with other people who have suffered a life changing disability or who have gone through a life changing accident. Um, you know, I feel like that would be powerful route I could go down. Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly, but something intense. I like it. <laughs> kind of fits your personality in general, right? Yeah. Something yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love watching, you know, Law and Order, Criminal Minds, you know, stuff like that. It just, it, intri it truly intrigues me. And it's something I've always been drawn to. I always go back to it. And so, you know, yeah, hopefully I'll find something like that. I'm sure you will. And, you know, I think, I mean, just a thought in, in you having your experiences, yes, you're learning in school, but so much of what you're bringing in is really who you are mm -hmm. and who you've developed yourself to be in life. And yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. I, I really, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see where, where this path is going to take me. This is exciting. Well, thank you very much for sharing. Yeah, thank you for the question. Thank you. All right, Hope, go ahead and come on, and then uh, we'll do Ruth. Zach, wow, uh, your testimonial is amazing. And I'd love to see you share your story everywhere because everybody needs to hear your story. And uh, your tenacity is just brilliant. I, I applaud you for paving you know, the way for maybe mentoring others that are hesitant, mm -hmm. that are in the same position as you. Um, so I'm really proud of you and thank you for sharing your story. Yeah, thank you. It is my pleasure. I, you know, I love sharing my story. I'm not a motivational speaker. Um, I'm, I, you know, I remember the first time I did my speaking uh, after my accident and I was terrified. I think I was more scared knowing I had to go speak publicly than when my accident first happened. Um, right. But, you know, after I did it, you know, the, the rewarding, rewarding feeling that I had after outweighed any of the, the nerves and anxiety that I had. So, yeah, I, I love to share my story and stuff. So. Yeah, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Awesome. Let's uh, go with Ruth. Go ahead, Ruth. Bring yourself on. There's Hi. Ruth. Good morning. Hi, Zach. Hi. Uh, I was just thinking, um, how did your accident affect your siblings or friends? Uh, you were 15 years old. Did that had um, 
an impact in the way that they listen they probably were more like i should listen to my parents and i mean it, it how did that affect them yeah that's actually a great question too and i talked a little bit briefly about the person i was before my accident and so i did not have a good relationship with my siblings or my family my parents really you know i my siblings loved me but they didn't really want to hang out with me a lot because i always liked to mess with them and you know i was a teenager i butted ahead with my parents and so we didn't have a horrible relationship but it was definitely like the typical teenager older brother you know just causing trouble and making more work for my parents so after my accident my relationship with them did a complete 180. i i am closer than i ever thought i could ever be with like my family and my siblings and we the relation i'm so close with them you know, the, the relationship that we have now is something I never thought I would have. And I couldn't imagine not having the relationship that I have with them now and how close I am with them. So, you know, that's definitely a huge positive thing that my injury has allowed to happen is change relationship that I have with my family. And as for my friends, um, that was really hard because, you know, it, it showed me who my true friends were and, you know, who people that I thought were my friends. Um, it also showed me a lot of, a lot, there was a few friends that I kind of expected to kind of disappear and other ones I thought would stay. And there were ones that I thought would leave that actually stuck around and ones that I thought would stick around that disappeared. So it was really hard. Um, high school was really hard for me just cause it was, it was it's such a social time and I'm such a social person. Um, I missed out like on a lot of things and um you know yeah like i said and it's hard it's a hard age for anyone you know beginning teenagers you know we're all selfish and really only care about ourselves and so you know i think a lot of my friends did the best they could but you know it, it, it was it was definitely hard but now the the relationships i've kept with my friends are extremely strong and i am really grateful for that well thanks for sharing Zach. you are amazing and i see a uh, the thing for a romantic movie you know hey. <laughs> her friend or fiance yes mm -hmm. thank you yeah. thanks for sharing that bless you awesome so um go ahead guys you can come on back on um and zach as we close out i just want to tell you um once again how much i appreciate you being the man that you are and um and being vulnerable and being uh allowing people to to see you over these years I mean like I said I've only known you maybe six years but I have just always every every time I see inter or interact with you come by your house and visit with you and your mom and dad or or uh, you know just see you online it's always just I'm like wow I can you can measure you can see the growth in you and yeah. and that's so exciting uh, I can't wait um I can't wait for your book to come out I, I yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be phenomenal, and um, and more than anything else, though, I can't wait for you to you and Bree to to uh, to meet Bree. I've I've been at the house right after she left or right before she. Left. I've never met her. Can't wait to meet her, and uh, and I just can't wait to see you guys create such an amazing relationship, um, and uh, and and fulfill your life uh, because your life. Um, you know, I love the fact that you didn't see your life as stopping. Your actual, your life actually started from that point. Yeah, and you I always say, through. you know, yeah, that was like my old life. The day my accident happened was when my new life started. And so, yeah, it's, Man, I love that. Yeah. I don't know. A big thing for me is just my perspective. You know, I, I, I can look at my accident two different ways and I, I choose to look at it um, as something I can learn and grow from. And you know, I'm very grateful to still be alive with my family. Um, there's a whole another talk I can go in about diff about quadriplegics, and you know, yeah. I I have a lot of movement and function that a lot of other people don't. So, you know, just look doing my best to focus on the things I still have, despite yeah. what I lost, has been a huge, okay. you know, reason why I've been able to handle this so positively and stuff. And the other day, I was scrolling through um, Facebook and I saw a, a quote that um, some like motivational page posted and it said, um, life is about 10% of what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, 
I love that. It totally hit me. <laughs> I yeah, love it. So, um, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it's all about how I choose to react to my situations and stuff. Awesome. How do people get in touch with you and what would you like to, them to do next? So if you want to get in touch with me, um, you can through Facebook or Instagram. I also have an email I can give you. And if you're curious, I have my own YouTube channel. If you type in Zach Colley, just my name, it'll pop up. And basically on there, I post, the point of me making that channel is just to educate and spread awareness about spinal cord injuries in my life. I have a wide variety of videos anywhere from me doing, uh, having my care being done, cooking, you know, I've gone skydiving, I've surfed, I've made videos on all of that. So um, if you're just curious to kind of see some more things about me and how I do certain things, just check out my YouTube channel. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, well, we'll if you can, uh, if you can tell us, um, I'll make sure that we post the, the YouTube channel and, uh, and some other things in there as well. You're also going to be a part of the Next Level by Association Facebook group. So yes. you'll be able to interact there okay. and, uh, and uh, you'll, you'll be able to get to meet everyone and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. And when this thing's all over and we get to actually do some live, we definitely want to bring you back and have you uh, meet the people live and because you're, you're so great at interacting with people. So. Thank you. I'd love to do that. And then I'll give you a, my, my next life update when the time comes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Hey, Zach, love you, man. I appreciate you. Love your family. Tell them I said, hello, give them a hug. And uh, I, will, uh, I will chat with you soon. Awesome. Thank you so much for have, having me. Absolutely. Have fun in Temecula. I will. Thank you. Bye. All right. Have so a be All right. Bye, guys. Great day. Thank you. Bye.